In this video, we will see um, other techniques for the diagnostic analytics. Uh, it is mining the data and finding the state transition between the data and how to plot it. We will see more of uh, diagnostic analytics in coming weeks, but let us look at uh, one, uh, one such uh, analysis in this week. Hope you remember the metal uh, environment uh, we showed in uh, week 2 and uh, we said what data can be collected and uh, how the log file might uh, look like right. So, we discussed that in a previous lecture. So, based on this values in the different um, uh, actions stored in the MongoDB and you convert it into CSV, we try to find out how many different kind of actions a student can do in the meta learning environment. We found out that around 100 plus different actions can be done in the metal environment, different kind of actions. So, but we group them because 100 plus uh, actions, 100 plus columns and you are comparing it to one variable will be too uh, uh, comp complex and it would not make any inference good. So, we group the actions based on which part of the problem they are working on. If you remember metal, uh, the problem map is uh, uh, classified into four uh, major maps and, uh, and the two uh, calculation and evaluation, right. So, the problem map is divided into three, uh, three major subtasks like is functional map, um, uh, quantitative model and qualitative model. Then also it has a calculation and evaluations. Also the menu and uh, simulator, uh, the info, info and other uh, part of uh, uh, tabs available for the students to use it. So, what we did, uh, we grouped all the planning actions in the functional model as a functional model planning. All the uh, execute uh, or exec execution or uh, contextualizations values in functional models FMEC. Similarly, for quantitative model, we name it as QM, QMP or QMEC. Similarly, for qualitative model, we have uh, planning and uh, uh, contextualizations and the calculations we tag it as CAL and evaluations we, we just uh, label it as eval. It is all just a labels, you know. So, FM is the one value, FMP, FMEC, the three variables here. Similarly, QNMP, QNMEC, uh, QIM, IMP, QIMEC, the are three, nine and uh, CAL and EVOL. So, so, CAL and EVOL, so 9, 10, 11 values uh, like we group all these actions into 11 different set of uh, actions. Also, we have a simulator action and uh, info, info graphics are they using hints or they logging in logging of actions. So, other than 11, we have another few more actions. Let us consider these actions we have, okay. Can we uh, create a uh, uh, process model of students uh, interaction behavior in the metal. Uh, here we do not know what we are predicting, right. We are not predicting the students so map score or students uh, ex, uh, performance in the final test or post test. Instead of we want to see uh, how students is doing, uh, what is the students interaction with the data. Uh, we might have uh, out of say 5 students, 2 students would have done uh, good in the uh, post test after the intervention with the metal four would have not done it. We want to see what, why happened, why student is uh, able to not able to score, what was the student's interaction behavior in that uh, particular learning environment. Consider we have a learning environment with a timestamp and all this uh, uh, actions are captured and we uh, have in a time series data, okay. Let us see how to compute the transition between these variables. Before we go into uh, looking at the metals transition, uh, let us see the example to explain what is transition probability. Given the distribution of two states say A and B, okay, the two states, um, there are two states one is A and uh, one is B. Uh, this is a, uh, it is arranged in a time series data and uh, it happened in a time uh, series manner, right. So, first a action A happened, action B A happened, B A A B something like that, okay. They have this arranged in the action series. How many actions are uh, A to B? Then 1, 2, you know, 3 and 4. 
um, some of you might know what is what I am doing is basically I am trying to draw the state transition table or state diagram right. If you know it is good um, you can skip this video, but uh, for others who do not know the state transition just trying to explain the basics. So, there are um, there are uh, A to B actions there are 4, what is 6? Six? 6 is uh, indicating how many times A to other action that is the 6 indicates how many times A to X happen, the X can be A or B. Okay. So, if you look at A to other actions, if you look at it, this is a 1, 2, um, see this is a 1 transition from A, this is a second transition from A, this is a third transition from A, this is a fourth transition from A, this is a fifth, this is a sixth. A to X, it can be A or B. Out of all 6 transition from a state A uh, to other action, there are 4 of them to A, B only, so 4 by 6. Which, we take, which means A to A will be 2 by 4 because uh, there is 1 and 2. If there are 6 transitions from A, 4 of them are to B which means 6 minus 4 will be 2. So, 2 by 6 so. Similarly, you can compute uh, what is the transition from B to B and uh, B to A. You can compute it, I would uh, I, I like you to check that one. Okay? I might be wrong, so you can please check it here. So, after you compute it, we can uh, draw the state transition diagram. This is the uh, state transition diagram or uh, state diagram. Um, Let us not go into the details of what is edges, nodes, all these things. Let us see a simple state transition diagram. This is two states A and B. Uh, state A, state B. From A to, uh, from A to B, uh, the value is 0 0.66. What is the probability of uh, you will get the next action B if your current action is A that is 4 by 6 like out of 6 actions 4 times even to B. So, high probability and 0 0.33 if you are in A action that is a 33 percentage of time is possible that you will come back to the A action only. So, 0.33 is a self transition. So, there are uh, 2 actions out of 6 came to A. So, this is basically 2 by 6 this is 4 by 6 this are the probability distribution of um, between these two states. Similarly, for B, uh, the 3 by 6 and 3 by 6, so 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Hope you understand this figure, right. Um, so, this figure indicates basically the uh, in a time series data, what is the transition between uh, two actions A and B. Let us consider we have um, how many actions, so 9, uh, 9 actions related to models and 2 actions calculate and eval and other actions like a simulator and other functions. Let us consider you have like 11 actions and uh, what will be the transition diagram where based on the student's interaction with the system. Okay. This is the transition diagram uh, based on student's interaction with the system, one student's progress. Okay. And this is from this particular paper, if you want to know more about this uh, transition, you can go and check this paper in the internet. Let us look at this uh, transition diagram in detail. Um, it is not indicating where the student started, that is very, very important. Okay. Start and end is not indicated. Let us assume that we start from the functional model okay. and uh, the color is very different. Um, okay. This green color indicates above point, uh, 0.4. Okay. Uh, this color indicates uh, less than point 0.4, but above point, uh, 0.2 like the blue color it is less than 0.4, but uh, above 0.2, this indicates less than 0.2. This is one student's uh, progress, uh, one student's interaction behavior in a metal system. The student who started with functional model uh, as did the exit context relations, then planning a bit, but most of the time it goes back to functional model. See the 0.57 uh, compared to 0.8. So, that is the uh, compared to uh, 0.285, it is the most of them is going back to the functional model or uh, there is a self loop and uh, it will be like there is a self loop and uh, the student is kind of uh, going around. If we move to the functional model planning, 
there is high chance the student goes to qualitative model or quantitative model both as 0.5 and 0.5. And uh, you might see sometimes it is not adding up to uh, 1, it is because we are not uh, showing all the values less than 0.1 in this figure to reduce the complexity of the figure. And uh, there are uh, then there is a interaction for post the student is goes to qualitative model, um, uh, he mostly goes to contextualizations and planning uh, then to uh, quantitative model. So, that is how it indicates like this. So, there is a high uh, transition is not no self loop or no other actions is happening here. Might be the students reading the ints correctly or student is able to understand what has to be done next. And uh, this indicates uh, most students who are in evaluation uh, go back to calculation or they go back to uh, functional model. Uh, also, there might be a less um, uh, probability of in self loop also less probability of less than point one probability of going to other actions. So, this graph indicates how the students uh, progress or students interaction behavior in the system. Uh, so, which way the student would have pro progressed to first you would have started with functional model then you would have spent time on functional model contestation for some time before you jump into a functional model planning. Once in the functional model planning you would have directly jumped to qualitative quantitative model or uh, you would have gone to uh, quantitative model right. Uh, in the final qualitative model you would have then qualitative model context positions planning then you would have went to uh, quantitative model. So, that indicates that how the student would have been progressed and uh, that indicates how the student would have progressed uh, in the uh, in the learning environment. So, then the student would have spent less time on evaluation or uh, uh, he might, might have uh, moving back to functional model or he might have come back to evaluation with the less probability. So, this graph indicates the students interaction behavior uh, in the learning environment given to them. We are not able to show how much time a student spent on each of these actions or number of times the each actions occur the frequency and the time spent is not shown in this figure. If you add that information you will get a more uh, complete detail right. We will look at it how to add those informations uh, in the next week when we discuss about pattern mining and process mining. But uh, this is to show you example that if you have a set of actions and you can compute simply the process model to understand uh, what is the students progress would have been. Uh, can you uh, think of how this state transition plot will vary if you use uh, interaction of more than one learner say 3 learners data or uh, 10 learners data how this transition plot will vary. Can you think of that ok, just think about it uh, if you able to think about how the plot will be uh, then you can resume the video to continue. So, this is the process model of uh, 6 users, um, 6 students uh, using it a bit uh, lot of uh, 2 and 4 between all this um, actions. What you can do is uh, you can uh, group the students uh, who are able to do well in uh, post test. Say 3 students who did good in post test after the intervention in learning environment, 3 students did not do good, you can divide them into 2 groups. You can run the process model on them like 3 students uh, behavior uh, analysis using the process the state transition diagram and 3 students you can plot the state transition. Then you can compare these two whether uh, which one is doing good which is not doing good why the student is uh, the group is not able to do well because they were not able to do the transition properly between the models or they are stuck somewhere they are going in a loop you can you can identify a lot of informations without uh, much uh, effort of say you are not trying to identify the frequency or time just simply the sequence of actions you can compute the process model or the state transition diagram. So, in this figure it shows that um, it is not just a, a direct jump on QM and IM to QM that student would have been like directly completing QAM to QM easy instead there are lot of other loops as possible because some other students would have done a different way. So, yeah and uh, this also tells you that if you have a proper logging mechanism and log data the n is no matter uh, not important if n is 1 or n is 100 you can compute this kind of diagrams easily because it is all uh, it is all same for the computation uh, uh, scripting all these things. Of course, the computation time is more I am saying it will be uh, simpler to scale 
if you have a logging mechanism with the proper uh, time and action IDs. So, in this video we saw an example of uh, how to look at the learners behavior uh, by mining their actions by uh, plotting a state transition diagram. And next week we will discuss in detail uh, sequential pattern mining and uh, process mining. And uh, once we do that uh, we will uh, go on to a clustering mechanism that will end the diagnostic analytics part of the learning analytics course. Thank you.